We have a population proportion P, which is the actual population that occurs, right? The sample proportion is essentially taking a percentage. It's saying, okay, how many successes do I have? So X is the successes, right? And N is the number of uh, trials or experiments or surveys that you're kind of running, right? So if, for example, in a population uh, we took 89 as the sample size, that's how many we had, and we had 19 you know, that have asthma or whatever thing we're looking for, then that's the sample proportion. So it's just like a percentage, right? right. Why asthma? Why asthma? Um, not, not, not to pick on anyone with asthma. asthma. Um, so what I want to look at year 12 is that the expected value and variance is something that we can also find, right? Now, the expected value and variance, we have those formulas for, for the binomial distribution. And we're going to do a similar thing. But the idea is because we're taking a sample, we have to divide by n. We have to divide by the number of trials that we are conducting um, because that's how we define the sample proportion. Right? So all I've done here is I've taken np, which is our typical mean, and I've divided that by n. But you notice that it actually divides through anyway, so it just ends up being p. Right? Um, because just like how we divide the sexes here by n, because we're taking that as a sample, right? we're just dividing through by how many samples we took, right? So it's just like a proportion. The idea is like it's like a percentage, right? Does that kind of make sense? So the idea is that you're, you've got an actual population of, you know, however many people, like thousands of people, and I'm only taking 89 of them, right? So when I'm looking at these kind of um, summary statistics, I can't find just n times p. I actually have to divide by n as well because you're finding a proportion, a percentage of what you've actually got. <laughs> Is that not making, no, not making sense? When I read through it, I was like, uh, okay, okay, I'm not super on, like, understanding, like, what's the situation here. But I think, um, let's go through a few of the problems first, and then you'll see that the calculations themselves. I think it's going to be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I think the idea is you divide by n because um, it's, a, it's like a proportion, right? It's out of how many samples you're taking. Yeah, so don't overthink it too much. We'll, We'll do a deep dive into it a bit later on. But for now, let's show you some examples. Okay. Now, the variance, there is a formula as well. And it looks slightly different. And because the variance is the standard deviation squared, um, by a similar notion, we actually have to divide by, not n, though, but n squared. That's right, yeah. And so these are going to divide through. And then this is, I think, on your formula sheet, or it's somewhere. Um, I'll just have a look if it's not. So then these divide through, so you end up with p outside of 1 minus p divided by n. So just be aware that the formula is slightly different for that. It's not just dividing by n, dividing by n squared. So it means you end up with this guy, right? What that means is now you can solve problems relating to the sample proportion, OK? So they have to make it clear that it's a sample, yeah? Um, so if you're ever working with the binomial Bernoulli distribution, they'll specify what distribution it is. But in this case, we're working with the sampling distribution. So we know we have to use these formulas over here, right? So they give us this information. And so just like before, we're just going to substitute those in, right? So for A, for example, um, my expected value of P hat, that would just be P versus 0.4. Yep. My variance, though, might need my cap hat for this one. We've got P outside of 1 minus P over N. So 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 divided by 50. Zero point zero zero four eight. perfect. All right. And next one for me. Um, Carl, can you help me out? Uh, yeah, so it's just the p value, so it's 0 0.9. So we've got 0 0.9 times 0.1 over 125. And what is it? 0 0.007, approximately. So was it 0 0.007, roughly, rounded? Yeah. Cool. Oh. Oh, wait. We didn't find the standard deviation for this. Sorry, my bad. So uh, SD uh, or sigma of this, what did you guys get for that for the first one? 0 0.069 times 
So, wait, this one here? So square root of um, 0 0.004, because remember that's the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. You probably shouldn't be rounding at this point. Or was it 0. Point um, 0. 0.07? 0. 0.07. 0. 0.07, roughly, yep. And this one? Uh, 0 0.8. Square root of 0. 0.00. <laughs> Wait, what was the actual thing? It was a 6, 9 something? Oh, I didn't know the actual one. Hang on. It is uh, 0 0.00072. Zero, 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 zero. Oh, is there another zero here? Yeah. Like that? Oh, yeah. man. Are these all right, though, these ones? I think so. Yeah, OK. All right. Six, 0 0.0. Zero. Do you want to count two decimal places? Sure. Yeah. Zero, zero, 003 to so 2 dB. Wait, what? So it's just checking. Is there too many zeros? No, it's fine. Sorry. All right, sweet. All right, cool. Um, so that's not too bad, right? But the idea here, here is that. We're not just calculating values here. We're actually going to use these. So how are we going to use these exactly? Well, I said that the key thing here is the more and more of these sample proportions you take, the closer and closer it gets to a normal distribution. So much so that, in fact, you can assume that it becomes a normal distribution, right? What's up? You wrote two DP. Oh. <laughs> two, two DP. <laughs> two, two DP. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. So, what it means is these calculations that we're doing, we can actually use the same properties that we were doing with the normal distribution. Now, when we're doing the normal distribution, one thing that we were closely looking at was the Z scores, right? But for the Z scores, how did you actually calculate that? How, what were the Z scores looking at? They were looking at how far away they were from the mean. So if you take like a normal distribution, right? And you have your mean over here, represented by mu, right? How did you actually calculate these, these Z scores? What were the Z scores actually looking at? Do you guys remember? Mm. Kind of think back. How many standard deviations away? That's exactly right, Joel. Yeah, it's how many standard deviations away, right? So you had one, negative one, two, negative two, so on and so forth, right? And so what you realized was that, OK, in order to do this, I need to find the average. I need to find mu. And I also need to find the standard deviation sigma. Right? And we can do that now with this sample proportion using our formulas. Right? So our um, sample proportion using that, our expected value or our mean, mu, would just be 19 on 89. And we put it random. What is 19 on 89? Roughly what? 0.21. Yeah, so it's about 21%. Right, so let's just use that roughly. And sigma, well, we can find that out through our variance calculation as well now, right? So we have our p value, so our probability of success, which is we're saying is 21%. So 0 0.21 multiplied by 1 minus p, so 0 0.89, no, 79. divided by the number of samples that we're taking. And in this case, the sample portion is 989, which we know is what? x divided by n. So 89 is the number of samples that we were taking here. So 89 over here. So this is going to be our, um, so this is our variance, actually. So variance. Yeah. Could you just put us Yeah, I could have done that. Hey. So let's just do that. <laughs> Sigma is going to be the square root of that. No, we're in more interested in the um, standard deviation because of the idea that this is closely related to the normal distribution. Okay. Mm -hmm. Zero point zero four two. Yep. Zero point zero four. Let's check this. Being a different number. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I put the one, sorry. What's that?